how do we keep people safer and enabling organizations to be more resilient? Today in the Cozy Act Kitchen, we're going to have an expert in resilience, security, Tracy Reinhold. Please stay tuned. Well, the world is a dangerous place, and it's a world where resilience is needed now more than ever before. I am so pleased and honored to have as our special guest uh, someone who I look up to in the security space, used to get to work with him, Tracy Reinhold, former FBI, Fannie Mae, combination of public sector and corporate sector security. He's someone who is called the security person's security person. Um, welcome, Tracy, to the Cozy AI Kitchen. <laughs> Thanks, John. I appreciate that. It's uh, it's great to see you. And um, I think you're right. It is a very dangerous world, um, more complex by the day. Um, but one of one of the things that I like about um, the future of technology, especially AI, is the ability to actually accelerate our capabilities as it relates to being able to be resilient and to respond to critical events. And we're going to walk through a simulated critical event series with artificial intelligence. But before we go there, we like to cook in the kitchen to understand how AI works. So if you'll bear with me, Tracy, we're come along into the kitchen. So first off, there are two kinds of models. One kind of model is a so-called completion model. It completes the sentence. That's the one everyone loves. It's the generative AI model. And so we're going to do is we're going to add a little bit of that magical, what's called semantic code into the That's about enough. <laughs> All right. Uh, and then we're going to use another kind of model called an embeddings model. Um, embedding models is basically based around the idea of finding similarity. Imagine any word, it's produced into a a long vector, and all you have to do is compare the two vectors together and you figure out if they're similar or not. And so we're gonna put some of that in here too. Okay, we'll cook it up, we'll cook it up over here. Two models together are producing amazing AI impact. And these two models are evolving at the same time. And I know that when we worked together, Tracy, uh, AI was kind of an idea. But this kind of AI is a reality because these two models are evolving at the exact same time. And we're going to do some of that right now. So let me bring up the special recipe for Tracy Reinhold operational resilience. Now, I want to quote Tracy here. You can get ahead of threats by being informed and having the technological capabilities to actually take action on that intelligence once you've acquired it. Tracy, can you share a bit about this idea of operational resilience with our audience? Yeah, so, so it's interesting, John, because part of the challenge is situational awareness and being able to mitigate things before they manifest. Part of that is actually accomplished by the utilization of intelligence. The intelligence has to be timely and it has to be accurate and it has to be actionable. Those three components are really important. Now, the timeliness part of it is really important because the only thing worse than no intelligence is old intelligence. If you make operational decisions based on intelligence that is no longer relevant. And I think this is where the utilization of AI can really help us uh, by deconflicting intelligence streams or data stream into that intelligence that helps us keep informed and to prevent mitigate or recover from uh, a disruption to our businesses. And that disruption, as I learned from you actually, is a boom or bang, a terrible event. And we know that there is something that happens before it, during it, and after it. And so you're talking about that preparation oftentimes before it, having the intelligence. So what I wanted to do is uh, fire up a semantic kernel uh, with two models, because we're using two models, the embedding model and the uh, completion model. And because you're special, Tracy, we'll use GPT-4, only our best model for you, <laughs> Tracy. Mm -hmm. um, and this is a series of uh, logs of events. 
And I'm now going to convert them to embedding space. And they are now processing. And they're all being basically converted into those long vectors of numbers. And next up, I'm going to show how uh, it really isn't matching just the string. It's actually matching the meaning. The meaning, such a strange idea. So I'm going to match something bad to everything I put in there, and all things OK. And what happens is, for something bad, it pulled out something bad. And for all things OK, it gave me something quite normal. And that's just a, a one example of a one-to-one. -one. It just sort of I asked for a, a query. I asked for a, a match. It gave me a match. Now I'm going to say, for all the bad things, give me more matches. And when it gives me more matches, it gives me a ranked order list of what it believes is more bad versus less bad. This is the email arrived in VP name redacted inbox. It was threatening. Uh, all the way to uh, result five, retail operations in London report of theft has occurred. And I'm going to like now uh, uh, show them all together as one uh, piece of data. And then what we're going to do is we're going to pass it into a special security kit plugin I made just in your honor, Tracy. And could you just sort of like comment on from an intelligence perspective what I showed just now? Does that sound like, uh, did you have access to this technology? You can't tell us because you were, you were in the FBI. But, but <laughs> you, is, this a, is this a common technology? Is this, does this feel normal to you? So, so yes and no. Um, I, I think the easiest way to say that is the speed with which technology is being developed today um, is exponentially faster with e each iteration. And what we're finding is with each iteration, it gives us more clarity into potential risks, threats, and vulnerabilities. So what we used even a year ago uh, would not be the same as what we could use today. And it's not going to be near what we can use six months from now because the iterative cycle is so fast and it's really effective if teams can use it the way that it's intended. Um, there are risks with it too, but let's talk about the benefits first. Hmm. So again, um, I just, I used to travel around the world with Tracy and I've never felt safer <laughs> around Tracy because Tracy has this background in understanding how to keep people safe. And boy, I've never felt in the kitchen so safe so far. So this is amazing. Um, so we're going to run a plugin that basically suggests next steps based upon that intelligence. Uh, or it's going to try to predict what's, what's, what, what should happen or what could occur next. And I know, Tracy, that these models, to your point, they're, they're, they're evolving iteratively. And uh, they're getting faster, cheaper, et cetera. And this really is uh, the most advanced model available. And notice how it's sort of hedging. I can't predict the future because I'm AI. That's called responsible AI, mind you. It's always reminding the human that, hey, uh, this is not a, a super duper alien technology. It's real. But it's describing things that should be done. The VP security details should be notified. That's that the thefts should be reported. The protests outside the London store could lead to increased security measures. And so it's sort of like uh, asking and saying the answer to what if next. I wrote another version of this that writes uh, our favorite format, the a situation report, so-called SITREP. And what this does is now have asked the system to create a, an appropriate um, report to give to a person's um, director. And when you think of situation reports, Tracy, what are the hallmarks of good ones? I'm just curious. Right. So a good sit rep is actually going to tell you the who, what, why, when, and where, um, so that you can actually take decisive action from it. Any of those missing parts actually prohibits your ability to action that intelligence. So the sit rep has to have those components to it so that you can actually use that to help you mitigate risk. Hmm. And um, what is uh, amazing, and as Tracy described that Tracy Reinhold class sit rep, we could write a new version of that AI code <laughs> to generate the Tracy Reinhold version. So uh, I wrote a very generic uh, format, Tracy, here. Um, but I want to note that you can start with a generic form, and you can further customize it just with, uh, as we were saying, 
uh, if I took everything you said just now for what should be in there, it would actually change uh, what comes out of it. So, uh, and again, from a science perspective, um, what is uh, striking is if you look at the amount of so-called tokens, the little bit of beans and rice of AI, um, it's, it's in the hundreds, but again, this is a pennies to actually produce this kind of report. So Tracy, any like thoughts on this as we start to close off the kitchen in this space? Yeah, so, so one of the things that I think is helpful. First of all, it, it's a great advancement, right? And it, it, it just provides us with a lot of actionable intelligence. The, the, the thing that, and which is why I like the fact that you're in the AI kitchen, um, is that we have to make this accessible to everybody. And part of that, I think, is demystifying AI so that the end user, the person that is responsible for launching a response plan, understands the value and then can use that to enhance the company's ability to protect itself. The best technology will not work if people won't use it. So I love the approach where you're, it's very, it's a simplistic approach, which is important because we have to remember who the end user is and what they're going to be looking for from AI in order to enhance their team's capabilities to protect their organization. If it's too complicated, they won't use it. If it's not clear, they won't use it. It has to be user friendly, which I think is so important and so often overlooked. And for someone like yourself who can speak and write like no other, this becomes a new medium for you to write software now, which is quite a different right. era. Well, oh, thanks for. Yeah. Well, thank you, Tracy, for joining the Cozy AI Kitchen. Do you have any parting thoughts for our audience, knowing that this world is a complex space, and any tips for operational resilience that you can give to them? Yeah. So I, I think accept AI accept technology, allow it to elevate your capabilities so that you can protect the organization that you're supposed to. Don't be afraid of it. Don't, um, if you don't understand it, ask. There are lots of folks out there like you, John, who are very good at explaining this. So take advantage of what's happening today. If we look back 10 years even at what technology could do versus what it could do today, it's night and day. And I think the future is very bright if, and you, you said it correctly, the responsible use of AI is the key. Every time Tracy talks, I get chills. <laughs> so anyways, I, 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 I used to watch his old C-SPAN reels uh, when he was representing <laughs> our country. I'm so proud to have you in the cozy ad kitchen with me. Miss working with you, Tracy. Thanks so much. And uh, thank you all for tuning into Cozy AI Kitchen, Security Edition. Uh, next episode, we'll see where this goes. Thanks again. Thanks, Sean.